All right, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Welcome, everybody. Um, first off, we do have closed captioning. So if you're in, in need of captioning, that is, if you're in the Zoom room down on your bottom control panel, you can open up the captions. Um, my name is Susan Deutsch. I am the program director at the News Writer Center, and we are really happy to be partnering with Louisa E. Gloria, Poet Laureate of Virginia, on this and several other programs. Before we get started, a few housekeeping things. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to say and you're watching this live in Zoom, feel free to use the chat for that. Uh, if you are watching live on Facebook, you are also welcome to post comments on there, although I can't promise that they will be seen right away. Um, I just wanna thank everyone so much for joining us, especially those watching live. And also if you're watching this recording after the fact, uh, a little bit about the Muse Writers Center. We are a literary nonprofit located in Norfolk, Virginia. Right now, we are almost entirely virtual, and we offer classes, seminars, and events such as this one, as well as a lot of community partnerships and outreach programs. We do also have open hours, so our building is open. Not today because of the snow. We are enjoying a lovely, now sunny and cold day here in southeastern Virginia. Uh, but if you look at our website, the-muse.org, that's got all the info you need if you want to come visit us in person, or if you'd like to see our upcoming events, including future events in this same series of readings. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, any work read here today is the property of the reader, of the poet, unless otherwise noted, and this is in no way a publication of unpublished works. Now that we have all that housekeeping out of the way, I'd like to pass it over to Dr. Luisa Igloria who is running today's program. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. This is probably the closest for now that we can get to uh, a more intimate gathering with all our young poets in the community winners. Uh, and I'm doing this presentation of all our young poets in the community winners by groups. Uh, and this is the first of three, uh, a series of three programs dedicated entirely to introducing you to our 2021-22 Virginia Young Poets in the Community. Now, I just wanna give a background to those of you who may not know what this is. Uh, in, I think in the middle of summer last year, I sent out a call for submissions to a project that I created as Poet Laureate of the Commonwealth of Virginia. I'm also doing this under the auspices of uh, the Academy of American Poets Poet Laureate Fellowship grants, which I'm very lucky to be uh, one of the recipients. And in this way, I was able to um, make uh, it possible for our young poets in the community uh, selections to uh, come away with not only you know, uh, a certificate of award, but some kind of incentive for them to continue bringing what they're most excited about in terms of their own poetry to those that they are, uh, they love, uh, to those parts of their community that they serve and that they identify with. So we asked our young poets in Virginia to show through their poems what it is that matters most to them in our world today. So we sent out a call to uh, basically the entire state. And uh, we had a lot of help from the Poetry Society of Virginia, which is a co-sponsor as well. And we had a wonderful selection committee. I just wanna quickly do a shout out to them. Uh, we had Kathy Haley, Kendra McDonald, and Steve Booker and Eddie Dow, who formed part of, uh, who formed our selection committee. And we all, hope to choose five young poets in the community from each of the six Poetry Society Virginia regions for a total of 30. But since this is a pilot project, uh, I think we got a good response anyway, but we did uh, select 24 uh, wonderful young poets, some of whom you will be listening to today in order to um, hear what their poetry is like, how their words resonate, what it was that uh, caught our attention, what they want to do uh, in their public poetry projects and proposals. So they were all selected for the quality and resonance of their poems, 
for the originality and relevance of what they envision as a public poetry project. And this is really, what, what does it mean to have a public poetry project? This is really about showing poets uh, poetry's role as a tool for social change during our time and bringing it outside of just the circle of just the poet writing for uh, themselves and for their immediate circle of friends. So I'm very excited because the rest of the year until the end of June uh, will be uh, the time during which our young poets will carry out their public poetry projects. So I wanna in turn just uh, introduce them uh, to you and I will let them do a little bit more of a personal introduction when it comes time for them. They, they will each be reading uh, their poem and then talking to us a little bit about what they wanna do in terms of their public poetry projects. So uh, first off in the elementary school category, we have Jaden Isaiah Brown from Chester, Virginia, say hi. Hello. And then we have um, David Babick from Virginia Beach. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. And one more. Uh, we have Emily Nguyen, who is from Annandale, Virginia. Welcome, Emily. Hi. Hello. And uh, in the middle school category from Richmond, Virginia, we have uh, Kainia Clements, say hello. Papers, there you are. Okay, so we're so glad you could be here to join us today. And from mostly Virginia, Abigail Willis. Hi. Right. Thank you for being here. Um, we have two more that we're introducing before we go right around again and have each one in turn read a little bit of their work and then share uh, something about their public poetry project. So we have Elaine Zhang from Falls Church, Virginia. Hello. Hello, Elaine. Nice to have you here. And last but not least, Zoe Lee from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Congratulations. Hello. And hello. hello. All right, so I hope uh, you've all had a chance to kind of soak in um, a little bit of the uh, uh, the excitement from being selected. I know that um, you have all of the rest of the uh, half year ahead in order to carry out your projects. But what I'd, what I'd really like to do is to introduce you to our um, audience today in terms of the words that you submitted to us, your poems, uh, what it is that um, makes you so unique in terms of the voice that you bring to your poetry. So we'll just go back around and uh, start with Jaden. So could share a poem with us and share a little bit more about yourself and about your project. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Jaden Brown. I'm a fifth grade student at Curtis Elementary School in Chester, Virginia. The name of my poem is Extra Extra, Read All About It. Extra Extra, Read All About It. What do you see when you see me? A, a black boy with no daddy, a single mom with no degrees, a track record for felonies, extra, extra, read all about it. I'm a black boy with both parents. They have degrees and support our family. Black boys, you matter too. Don't let your neighborhood define you. My future is bright and you should see, but in this world, you don't read about kids like me. You're Thank muted. you so much. Thank you so much, Jaden. Uh, in your Young Poets bio that you submitted, uh, so many impressive things that you shared with us. Um, you say that uh, when you were listening to uh, people in your family and community talk about the Black Lives Matter program, uh, you were um, a little bit overwhelmed, maybe is probably a way to put it, and found that writing was a great way to express yourself. And I, I see here in your bio that you've had wonderful opportunities to connect already with other people in your community and beyond. And you've opened for people like Dr. Ibram X. Candy 
and Jason Reynolds, who are authors on the number one New York Times bestseller list. Now, tell us, how did that come about? How did that happen? And uh, can you share a little bit of a story, maybe, and what led to that? That sounds really exciting. It all started in third grade when I shared my poem with my principal. And then she shared it with uh, the county. And then now I've met so many people. And did this mean going to New York actually to read? Or where were you when you read these poems on these stages with these uh, famous authors? Sadly, Zoom. Oh, Zoom, yes, I know. Uh, someday, you know, we shall all be together in a room and um, share snacks and sandwiches and cool drinks. But um, can you tell us a little bit about your proposed public poetry project? Maybe a little bit about your mentor also, and maybe why you chose your mentor and um, just anything that you'd like to share about this thing that you're excited to do. It's my mom, because she helps me for all of my poems. Yeah. So can you describe what your public poetry project is going to be? It's crime. I want to build better relationships between the community and the police. And how are you doing this? Are you going to be holding workshops? What, what is the way in order for people to um, gather around uh, writing poems about this subject? Will you get people to be writing poems about this subject? How do you envision that to take place? I would like to make a book, but then we decide not to because we don't want it to hurt the future of me getting bullied. Mm -hmm. She's asking, how are you going to build that relationship? Like when we talked about meeting with the police department. My mentor, mom, you can show your face too. <laughs> Hello, thank you for being here with us too. Um, and thank you for, um, inspiring your young poet in many ways, I'm sure. Thank you very much. He's, he's very nervous. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I'm very nervous too. Uh, when I was your age, I couldn't even answer the phone. I was just terrified. So I totally, I'm, I'm right there with you. But I'm just excited to hear about uh, first steps maybe that you will be taking or you have already been taking to make connections with the right kinds of people in your community so that you can um, uh, fulfill your project. Uh, like maybe this January, what are you going to do? Do you have some kind of outline mapped out in February? You know, you know, just how, how do you think um, you'll do things first? Probably spreading my poems and telling them that we can stop just bullying, well, not bullying, like mm -hmm. just stop crimes and just mm -hmm. be happy for our, for our communities. Mm -hmm. And you'll be using poetry in order to create these conversations, correct? So yes. will you also encourage other people to write along with you poems yes. that talk about this subject? Yes. Okay, so that is a very important subject. And yeah, you said in your bio that you submitted to us that you see poetry as a tool for social change because poetry allows us to voice what sometimes we can't express, right? So our conflicts, our anxieties, our concerns uh, towards resolving um, issues maybe or problems that we see in the world. But also definitely, like I, I heard you say, you know, writing also about joyful things, things that are uplifting in our communities. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say to us before we move on to the next poet? And maybe we can widen that conversation among us in a little bit, but more power to you. And thank you for uh, such a spirited reading of your poem. I would like to say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Yes, we're so excited. All right. I am um, turning to David Babick from Virginia Beach. Hello again, David. Will you read for us? And will you say uh, a little something about your public poetry project? Oh, so is it all three that I submitted or just one? I think we can, you know, uh, we can read through all of what you submitted that is on the selection um, list. 
it's I think we have enough time for that. So go ahead. So you are from Virginia Beach. You are uh, third grade. You know, say something else about yourself. Any any fun facts that we should know about? Absolutely. I'm not sure about the fun facts. Uh, for the fun facts, probably that this competition is really what like these three poems were my first poems I ever wrote mm -hmm. specifically for this competition. Right. And I see that you've been taking classes also at the Muse Writers Center. And uh, one of your workshop teachers is also uh, a friend of mine, Lydia Netzer. Um, but you know, all of these were judged, you know, blind, of course, we didn't know what we were getting, but um, David uh, is um, going to do a lot of different like podcasts ahead. And I'm eager to hear more about that too after he reads his poems. So go ahead, David. Yeah, so I'll, the baby. What animal is this? Well, it's the one that sticks its bottom in your face and growls at someone who doesn't do what they want them to. So the first poem is only three lines, and then I'll move on. The chicken. Behold the mighty crime-fighting chicken. It does not quack, but it clucks, and the best treat to give it is a chocolate bar. And who has seen the wizards? Who's seen the wizards? Have you? Has he? Has she? No, nobody has seen the wizards. But when will they return? Well, when the earth trembles and cracks and the air is forming thunderstorm, that's when the wizards are here. All right. Thank you for reading those poems. They sound like very fun poems to listen to and to read. And it seems like you, you also had fun writing them. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, they each seem very unique and very different. Um, what made you jump from chickens to wizards? I'm just curious about, you know, what you were thinking of when you wrote about wizards. Yeah, so the wizards, it was just, where the wizards was really inspired by who has seen the wind. Mm. Yeah, that's really what inspired me for the who has seen the wizards. And for my poem, The Baby, my baby brother, Lincoln, actually inspired me. Ah, okay. And everything in that poem is based off of my baby brother. Okay. So that's great because I think that you can write poetry about just about anything. There's no subject too big or too small for a poem. So uh, can you tell us now about what you intend to do for your public poetry project? I would like to do a podcast for it. I, wait, do I actually have my proposal here? Yeah. So its name is Poetry is Something That Spreads Happiness. And I'm actually still working on the first season. Mm -hmm. I've gotten pretty far for it. Yeah, I've been using GarageBand mm -hmm. with my microphone, yeah. So, and I've actually gotten, yeah. So who is actually, this podcast for? And uh, what will you be talking about in the podcast? Or who will you be inviting as guests to your podcast? So I, so far I've got you, um, Oops, I think I'm on to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, each week will be um, a, one adult poet and one kid poet. Mm -hmm. And you said something in your proposal about how uh, you want the conversation to be about what um, poetry can do to make things uh, more uplifting, maybe. Um, and you also said something about how podcast guests will be invited to talk about how poetry has changed them 
or how they think it can make change in the world to make it a better place. Yep. Right? So have you seen any ways, you yourself, have you seen ways in which poetry does make things better around you? Yeah, it can spread happiness or mm -hmm. make people laugh like the ah. chicken and the chicken mm -hmm. or actually my real hit on them what I wanted was just to try and give you like a good laugh mm -hmm. that's really the point of writing them right right yeah, yeah. that's very important I think uh, it is important for us to remember that uh, we can still find things to um, enjoy to laugh about to share with others our enjoyment of things to um, find something joyful, especially in these times where there's uh, so much that we're all kind of anxious about, right? So um, that's, uh, again, more power to you. I look forward to listening to your podcasts and, uh, and thank you for inviting me to one of them. You're welcome. Gracious of you. All right. Thank you, David. I am moving now to the middle school poets and leading them off uh, to tell us more about her poetry project and to read her poem is Kynia Clemens from Richmond, Virginia. Kynia. Hi, I'm Kynia. Okay, Kynia. I'm sorry. Kynia. Kynia. Yeah. I'm Kynia Clemens. I'm in the eighth grade. I'm from Anna Julia Cooper Middle School. And the name of my poem is For My People. For my people who have a snack in each hand, for my people who wipe off crumbs and suck their hot Cheeto dust fingers, for my people who pay $20 for snacks, for my steaming hot steak, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, and rolls, for my foodie people, for my people who sit in the back of the class, for the people who say I'm okay with being alone, for the people who sit with their heads down, for the quiet, calm, secretive, and kind, for my quiet people. For my people who make jokes, for the people who laugh, play, jump, and run. For my people who hit you when they're crying, laughing, and snort. For my funny people. For my, I bet I can touch the wind people. For my beach shoes, callous hands. For my 100 push ups, five mile run, 20 sit ups. For my, I'm better than a boy. For my tumbles. For the people who talk behind their friends' back. For my sneaky, Sneaky, secretive, talkative, and conceited. For my easy to be friend, for my fake people. For my music people, for my Alicia Keys, a Mariah Carey, Usher, and her. For my Sunday cleaning. For my using anything and everything as a microphone. For my rhythm and blues people. <laughs> for my people, for my people, I can answer any question off the top of my head. For my no need to count on their fingers. For my intelligent, outgoing stars in the class. For my honors and straight A's. For my teacher pets. For my smart people. For my melatonin covered. For my Saturday cookouts. For my Sunday cooking R&B plan. For my music. Shaking hips. Praising the Lord and all things holy. For To the best mothers in the world. For my beautiful black queens for my black people these are my people wow thank you that is quite a poem it's a list of so many wonderful different kinds of people and you've sort of dedicated this poem to them so I guess it's kind of like an ode to your what you consider your people my people uh can you tell us a little bit about how you came to write this poem what is the background of this poem um so in class, I kind of realized that my my classmates are broken up into different groups. And I was just like, wow, I'm in every single one of these groups. I don't have one group I just sit in. And I was just, I just said, let me write about this because I think it would be really funny to tell people how my class is separated. 
it's wonderful. Like I love how uh, you have so many different details and you kind of really zoom in on those little things that might be easy to miss, but it's really what gives you um, a, a really clear idea for who you're talking about. Like you have the hot Cheetos dust fingers of some of these people you talk about, uh, the things they eat, uh, even the ones who are quiet, the ones who do push-ups, the ones who do sports, and those that don't. So everyone seems to be included in uh, your your. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Emily, I will come back to you. I was like, my eyes are so bad. Yeah, I did not mean to do that. But I will come back to you after um, Kinaya, we are going to listen to uh, Emily in in the elementary school category too. Um, so by Kinaya, will you finish up by talking about your poetry project before we go to Emily? And thank you for pointing that out because you know my eyes are so bad right now. Yes. Yeah. Um, my poetry project will be a poetry wall, which is um, a place for any poet to come and present their work. They don't have to attach their name if they don't want to or isn't comfortable with that. And it, I just think it's going to be a very fun way of bringing people together through poetry. Mm -hmm. So you've identified an actual place in your neighborhood? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how big is this wall or this space that you are thinking of transforming into, uh, it's basically a poetry mural, correct? Yes. How big is it, it? We have one wall inside the school that we're going to use for like the winter and like rainy days. But we have this huge, I think like 20 feet wall outside of our school that we will um, present poetry on mm -hmm. so the community can read and see right. it our talented poets. Yeah, so what materials are you planning to use? Is it chalk, paint, what? It's gonna be everything. So okay. so if it so happened that we're gonna use paint, I think for the little kids, they can come up and like dip their hand in the paint and do finger painting on there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have our poetry on the top of it. And it okay. just looks so cool. Yeah, so you have a picture in your mind already what it's gonna look like. That's amazing. So um, are you inviting people to also write their own original poetry on this wall? It's not just stuff that you get from um, printed or published poetry? Yes. Yes. Well, Anybody can do their own thing. Yeah. Will there be a theme to the poems that you invite yes. people to put on the wall? What yes. theme is that going to be? Like, say it's October, then we'll do a Halloween theme. And since I want to start my um, project in the beginning of February, mm -hmm. we're going to have a Valentine's Day theme for that because I think that will really get oh, everything. Yeah. So it's actually like a rotating theme. So you will be taking some of those away and painting over or introducing new things. Is that the idea? Yes. So something that changes with time also. Yeah, well, that's very exciting. And I hope you make sure to document, take pictures and send them all to us. Uh, all of you who are doing your poetry projects, by the way, please document and share them, share the pictures with everybody, share it for, for sure with me. I would love to see that happen. Thank you uh, so much, Kinaya. And I will go back, backtrack to Emily uh, Nguyen, who uh, I inadvertently missed in the elementary round, but Emily, you are here and you are very much, you know, I'm very eager to hear uh, more about you and have you read your poem and tell us more about your public poetry project. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Emily Nguyen. Um, I go to uh, Camelot Elementary School. I'm in fifth grade. Um, Camelot Elementary School in Northern Virginia, and that's all. Um, my poem's name is Social Distancing, and the other one is Rainbows. Even with distance, the world feels painfully close, but hope turns the page. And the other one is Always a Start, Always an End, Like How to Make a Friend. There is a pot full of gold, like how secrets are never never told. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, especially that first poem that you read, 
about social distancing, it really speaks to a lot of what all of us are feeling during this time. So thank you for writing that poem and sharing it with us. Um, Emily, tell us about your proposed poetry project, public poetry project. I'm very interested um, because you're also working with another poet's um, uh, poem, but I'll let you talk about it. Uh, okay, so um, my project is called The Poetry Path, and um, it's about uh, a station um, of students created poem poetry spread in a path around our school field. Um, students will create poems that are inspired by the poem by Naomi Shihabni, The Blue Bucket. Students will be writing a poem about what fills up their own bucket. Um, it is my hope that by sharing these poems, we will inspire each other and um, parents and adults. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So you basically looked at the space. You say this is going to be around your school field. So this seems like, is this a big area? Or um, maybe can you tell us how many buckets, poetry buckets, poetry stations there will be around the field? Uh, I think there will be, each station will be every grade. And um, our field is pretty big. So I think it might fit um, around eight. Mm -hmm. And the students will write their poems and uh, it's the idea for them to put them in each bucket and for anyone who can take a walk around the field to be able to read the poems that yeah. um, contributed. That sounds amazing. What led to this idea? What, where did you get the idea to do this besides reading the poem? of Naomi Shihab Nye, who's also a poet I love very much. And she also happens to be the Young People's Poet Laureate for the US uh, for, I think she's still serving in that capacity since 2019. But uh, where did you get this connection to her poem? Uh, did you read it in class? And did you feel like this was the best way to, uh, for you to, what, what, what is the connection? What's the personal connection for you? Um, so there's this event in the school, and it's around uh, the end of the school year. It's called A Walk in My Shoes, mm -hmm. and there are um, stations around the gym, and we can, like, uh, see how it's like to be in someone's shoes. And it connected me to uh, the poetry path of how this could be, each station could be, um, each grade um, student poetry uh, and we could each walk around the field and read them. Wow well I hope that all of these contributions that you get in your poetry path uh, are things that you will keep also and document keep and maybe um, collect and put together either in a document or maybe some kind of scrapbook. Uh, do you see this maybe as something that um, your school would be able to keep up or uh, do in other years, you know, even beyond your own um, residence at your school? Is this something that you hope they will keep doing? Yeah. Wonderful. So is there anything else you'd like to share with us about uh, this uh, selection for the young poets and community, does it make you feel like um, you have other kinds of projects beyond this that you may be thinking of in the future? Because I'm very excited to come see your poetry path. I hope I have a chance to do that. I would like to drop a poem in the bucket too. Okay. I don't think I have any other questions. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you for being here again. All right. Um, I. I'm just seeing all kinds of visions in my head from uh, all the things that our young poets have been describing. So it's very exciting. And remember our audience, this is only the first of three programs presenting our Virginia young poets in the community. Our next young poet is Abigail Willis from mostly Virginia, Abby. Hi. You go by Abby? Yeah, I go by Abby. All right. Um, so I live in mostly Virginia. I go to Talha Creek Middle School, and my poem is called The Lost Ones. 
People around us enter as they come. Each frond on the trees make up their book, the book of life. Bridges, stems, blossoms, rivers and rocks, bugs and birds too. Every detail adds to their chapters, the chapters of life. Gossip girls, jocks, nerds, freaks and geeks, side characters and main characters too. All people we run into on a daily. They scream and shout as they cry out, expressing emotions as they live carelessly, tying their stomachs into knots as they laugh, never once worrying about their history, how the next day is a mystery. These are the ones our world sees bound and free. Then there's the lost ones, the ones lost in the space between the lines, the lines of our life. Folded letters, bloody pen strokes, underweight vowels, A's wanting to be B's, galaxy color colored paint smudges, spoiled ink making inner prompts, four straight edges, the list goes on. Our capital letters are separate for a reason, but we still smile, fake or not. We try flipping the page, but we always turn back. Some of us waiting till the eraser comes. That's who I promised I'd write about. The lost ones, the ones they hear about but never choose to find. We have a map, but we're scared it's fake. We, the roads we take are dangerous. We know that. We try to find each other, collide heads on a path. All that does is create. And with that love comes more ones. When you think about us, don't say we're broken. Because if we were broken, we would be crying on our bed instead of swallowing forgotten, uh, instead of swallowing forgotten locations down our throat as we tread it through crowded school hallways. If we were broken, we'd be sitting in a therapist's office instead of algebra class, talking about how we have no map that leads us to a sense of home. If we were broken, we would have stopped wandering around miles back. These are who I promised to write about, the lost ones, the ones looking for their breakthrough. We live our life like everyone else, except we're just a little lost. Nobody sees lost, that's why we're lost. We blend in with the ones all sees found and free as we hike past ridges, stems, blossoms, rivers and rocks, bugs and birds too, mostly because we are the gossip girls, jocks, nerds, freaks and geeks, side characters and main characters too. Anyone can be lost and that is why I write. Thank you, Abby. Now, there's so much that uh, is striking about this poem that you've written. And perhaps two of the lines that uh, stuck out for me were the ones where uh, you said, some of us waiting till the erasers come, the eraser comes, that's who I promised I'd write about. So um, it's a wonderful uh, idea. It's a wonderful um, way to express uh, something very important, the idea of um, giving space and giving voice. Uh, tell us a little bit of how you came to that perspective and how you came to write this poem in the first place. Why did you, besides what you say in the poem, what's the background to this? Um, the background, so uh, in seventh grade is the whole year with like virtual school and like everything. And so um, the pandemic was really hard for me and I didn't really have a lot of like friends and stuff since I lost those over the pandemic. And um, it was really nice we went back to in person and um, since I didn't really have a lot of friends, I was really quiet and I was really shy. I was going through a lot. And so um, one of the things I, that allowed me to do was just kind of sit back and um, watch, like kind of watch the class, like watch everybody. And I started seeing a lot more things and I started like noticing a lot more things, becoming a lot more observant and per perceptive of like troubling things around our world and in like the people at my school and like in the world. And um, that was one of the things I remember I wrote it. Uh, if I'm being honest, I wrote this um, during May over the poetry month, like uh, the National Poetry Month, because all uh, my school, all the English departments in my school were doing uh, uh, like poetry uh, lessons and stuff. And so I decided to try it. And I wrote it like when I couldn't sleep at 3 a.m. and it turned out like this. 
Yeah, yeah. Some of the things you say are so um, important too to me as a poetry teacher, as someone who has tried to um, make poetry a part of my daily life. Also, the idea that what we're really doing when we write poems is paying closer attention to the world. I, I really, really uh, resonate with that idea because uh, even the little things are so important, right? Uh, and you said that you started noticing more things about uh, what's around you and you started bringing that into the lines of your poems and um, all of a sudden you feel that uh, you've said um, something that maybe you couldn't say in another way. Uh, it had to be in poetry or at least that's how I feel when I write. So thank you so much for sharing that. Could you, could you um, tell us a little bit more about your public poetry project that you submitted for your application to us? Yes, so what I um, chose for my poetry project was kind of similar to uh, Kanaya's, was like a poetry mural. And um, what we want to do is put a couple of uh, poems from some of my poetry friends that I uh, met through my writing workshop teacher. And, um, and we wanna put this on a, uh, on a wall in somewhere and make like this beautiful little poetry mural. mural. We're gonna write these. I know right now we're working on uh, writing the poems and uh, eventually we're gonna have some very talented artists that I know. We're gonna come together and kind of uh, paint it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just like I asked Kinaya, uh, is there going to be a theme for this project of yours? Yes. So um, one of the things that I know and reason why I do write is to kind of like help people. And so reason why I do have uh, the certain people I chose to help me uh, write the poems and stuff was because they had the same views on writing. And that is to like help people because writing can do lots of things. And, and I agree. People. And if, uh, and putting in this best way I could see myself doing it is putting it on a wall for everybody to see. Right, right. Yeah, wonderful. So more power to you. And again, please document. And I look forward to seeing your progress and hearing back from all of you about the way it's uh, going, you know, how your projects are going. And if there's any other ways in which I can support uh, any of you, all of you, please let, let us know. Uh, we're here to help in whatever way we can. Um, yeah, and the idea of taking poetry out into the world and um, realizing that it's not for me at least. And I think uh, a lot of what I've seen from all the applications for this project is that it also resonates with our young poets. The idea that poetry is not just a static decoration. It's not just something that sits on a page. It's something that really um, helps to create connections or at least that's in my experience. And I hope that's the same thing for all of you too. So we're moving to our uh, last two poets this afternoon. Um, and also in the middle school category, we have Elaine Zhang from Falls Church. Elaine, go ahead. Hi, my name is Elaine, and I go. Um, I am in sixth grade, and I go to Haycock Elementary School, which is in Northern Virginia. Is there um, something you'd like to tell us besides uh, uh, reading to your poem? Um, talk about your project later but I think yeah okay you can read your poem now I'm sorry I'm just mumbling <laughs> yeah I think my poem will probably explain like a lot of who I am so yeah go ahead where I'm from I'm from music scores from ebony and ivory I am from the dust on my windowsill cream tear stained gritty melancholy from farewells I am from mini roses the magnolia tree whose long gone bark eaten by the deer, I remember as if it was my own. From decorative red envelopes and educators, from the Analects of Confucius, Chen and Zhang, I'm from the right-handed relatives, a trait which I contradict, and eyeglasses, from just try and it's not bitter, bitter melon. I'm from the fears of Nian, which built my strength, and the strength of Pangu, where I've built my courage. I'm from Oakton, my humus and topsoil, my roots extending into China, my subsoil and bedrock. My mirror was made in America, but my reflection is Chinese. 
inside and outside. I'm from chive dumplings and rice wine, from the cracks on my copper paintbrushes, the stitches my mother got on her eye, twice. In our living room is a display filled with images and keepsakes, artifacts from all around the world, the memories to pirouette beneath my dreams, magical reminiscences to relive. I am from those moments. The branches on my family tree may be small, but the leaves are large, providing cover in the rain. Thank you, Elaine. That's such a wonderful poem. Uh, all the specific images are just so vivid. I can see them. I can hear them. I mean, moments like the one where you really drill down into that image, you go from the tree to the long gone bark eaten by the deer. I love, I love the way you, you guide the eye of your reader into that kind of level of seeing. And it's something I was talking about earlier too when um, uh, one of the other poets was reading and talking about her poem, this attention to the world. It just mm -hmm. captured so well and what you're able to do in the poem. And I also related to the bitter melon line so much. Yeah. Uh, I think in Asian households, there's got to be at least one bitter melon story. Um, <laughs> I, I connected to that. Um, is there anything uh, you'd like to share about how this poem came together um, for you? And maybe um, any story or background connected to it. I'm just you know, always curious about where poems come from. Okay. So at my school, um, the sixth graders, they all write where I'm from poems at the beginning of the year. So. Um, and as like when I was younger, I'd always look at them and be like, I want to write that because they always looked like a lot of them were similar and they were just very inspiring to me. And we, yeah, we got to make them very personalized. So then when I finally got to sixth grade, you know, even before I got to sixth grade, I decided to write my own. So this is where it came from. And I kind of like even though I've been longing to write it for so long so I had like writer's block when I first started and I'm like why can't I think of anything and then I'm like well where am I from so I just kind of like drilled I, I like rewinded and started back from when I was like in like kindergarten and then I kind of made my way to like where I am now so yeah that's where this poem came from. Mm -hmm. What do you, you mentioned writer's block what do you do when you feel like you're stuck in a poem? Um, sometimes I go on, like, I read other poems. Other times, like, I write, um, I do ekphrastic poetry writing, which is where I look at an image, and then I start writing, and then, right? Yeah. Looking at a piece of art, yes, yes. Uh, lovely. Yeah, I, I like ekphrastic poems, too. When you write about a piece of art, it gives you um, something immediately to look at, and then you just start mm -hmm. describing what you see, and then it takes you somewhere else. So I love that, too. Yeah. Uh, now, can you talk about your public poetry project proposal? Uh, yes. So my poetry project is um, I'm planning to lead poets in grades three through six to create their own remixes of prominent poems, such as Where I Am From by George L. Lyon, um, I Grew Up by Lenore Keishing Tobias, and Girl by Jamaica Kinsade. And I hope that through crafting their own renditions of these poems that um, that are centered around the topic of identity, they'll, the poets will better like understand themselves and of course the people around them. And that way they can make connections. And it, that's it is very important, especially after like isolation and like COVID and all this. Yeah. And yeah, I hope that this will help improve their um, well emotional well-being with their spirits and strengths and strengthen their social interactions right and what you're calling basically a poetry remix is basically i guess i've heard some other teachers call it uh, like an imitation poem where you mm -hmm. start yeah. with an existing um usually famous uh poem but a poem which is arresting a poem which is um strong and speaks uh in in a lot of um uh, powerful detail to uh, a topic that you're exploring. You say you're exploring the topic of identity. So I, I agree it's a great way to kind of make something your own. Uh, I also think it's a way to enter kind of like, you know, into a conversation with other poets 
So even if um, for me, I think of poetry as having such a long history, we can yeah. enter into this history and have conversations with poets who have you know, uh, lived long before us. And we can also think of it as a conversation we will be having that with people that might come after us. So I think that what you're trying to do is very important. So thank you for this. To hear more about how your project goes. Thank you for reading. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, more power to you. Um, and last but not least, our, our last middle school poet is Zoe Lee from Fredericksburg. Go ahead, Zoe. Hi, I'm Zoe Lee, and I go to Drew Middle School in Stafford County, Fredericksburg. I'll get started. Yes, you can read your poem. See the leaves fall down from lively green to dead brown. Days go shorter as the warmth quickly fades away. Seasons of longing have come. Will you read the other one too, the haiku? Oh, okay. My rings will guide me. They flap with great grace and speed, soaring through the sky. Thank you. So the thing with poems like these that are part of um, other uh, inherited poems from other poetry traditions is that they have uh, certain ideas about rules that you follow, but I think that one of the things that they also, for the tanka and the haiku, again, uh, you're asked to provide very clear, very precise imagery for your reader. And I really wanna commend you for being able to do that in, in these poems that you've shared. Um, can you tell us what made you write these particular poems? And is there anything that maybe you might um, recommend to other young poets like yourself who uh, might want to know more? How do you write a clear and effective image into a poem? What are some of the things that you've learned about doing this yourself? Well, to write a good imagery, you really have to see it in your mind first. Mm -hmm. That and have a good vocabulary. Ah, very good. So how do you improve your vocabulary? I know when I was a kid growing up, my father would make me like do crossword puzzles. He would make me uh, list vocabulary words and have me look in the dictionary, all you know, perfectly nerdy, geeky things to do, right? When you're trying to <laughs> teach your child more about language. But uh, I just wonder about your own process. What do you do um, to uh, create words uh, in your poems that like, do things that uh, I've heard other people say, like poetry uh, and imagery in poetry. You know, you look for the words that um, not just are very precise, but that kind of pop, you know, that give you that vividness in your mind. You were talking about being able to see the image in your mind, right? Yeah. So like your, uh, your lively green and dead brown leaves, how they change. So you caught that in your poem. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, is there, um, tell us about your public poetry project proposal and what you intend to achieve by doing this. Yeah, so my project is a club. Right now I'm calling it the Poetry and the Community Club, but that might change later on. Mm -hmm. And I hope by, by to have the students in this club become more active in their community after reading and doing activities with them. Mm -hmm. So um, where are you going to be uh, um, gathering with your, your poetry club? Only in your school? Are you planning to just keep it there? Are you? I'm thinking about doing it in my school for now, but I might want to outreach it. When we get okay. Well, if uh, again, as we said to all of you, if there's any ways in which we can help you, you know, brainstorm further 
into your projects so you can um, get the most out of what you're planning to do, you know, let us know. Uh, I think in the emails I've sent out, I've also provided the emails of the uh, committee members, selection committee members, and we're all, you know, happy to help if we can. So thank you for that. Uh, I wanted to throw out a general question actually to everyone in the group, all our young poets, and you know, a hand to all of you again. Thank you for reading. Thank you for what you're trying to do with your projects outside of you know your own little uh, environment, taking it out into a broader part of your community. So I commend you all for doing that. Uh, I wanted to know um, how do you, how would you encourage others to read and write more poetry? What would you do? just for everyone in general. And anyone can just jump in uh, and you know, just pick up that thread if you have an idea. How do you, how do you see this maybe encouraging others to do this? I don't know, I've, I've taught for quite a bit of uh, time and I'm always a little sad when I hear uh, students say things like, I really hate poetry. Um, I can't see myself writing it or reading it. I'm like, what happened? Um, so how did you fall in love with poetry? Maybe another way of asking the same question. Why do you, what do you love about poetry? Why do you come to it? I'm, I'm sure you do a lot of uh, other wonderful things, but uh, why do you love poetry? Yes, um, who is that raising her hand? Kinaya. Um, one of the ways I found that I really got a love for poetry is because I get to express myself more. Like, I know you can do that in writing, but in poetry, you can do it in a shorter way, but it still comes across as like a great book that you might have read one day. Mm -hmm. And for poetry, I think it's because it just flows so smoothly, like it ain't nothing too upbeat, you don't you don't have to put too much thought into it. It just flows. Mm -hmm. Right. And that flow, kind of like music, I guess, is what you're talking about, that idea of flow. Would, would anyone else? Thank you, uh, Kinaya. Is there anybody else that would like to um, talk about what it is they love about poetry? Abby? Um, one of the things kind of like nice, but one of the things is like, it's great to like get stuff out. Like if you have something on your heart or if you really just want to get something out there out in the world, um, it's something that like helps the writer, but in the process, it can also help the reader if you put it out there and get it out there in the world. Oh, really uh, well put. I couldn't have put it better myself. I agree. So it's not just talking to yourself, really. You're able to reach other people. And it's like um, the connection is something that's not just an idea. It's also a connection that you can feel, right? Or at least that's the way it is for me. Uh, who are some of your poetry heroes or sheroes? Who do you, who do you like? Can you... Uh, I'll just maybe talk about someone you whose work you admire in the poetry world. Um, Jaden, were you raising your hand? I say Jason Reynolds. Why? And um, he was he was inspiring for me when I was in a, on a Zoom meeting with him. Mm -hmm. I felt inspired. Mm -hmm. And what it is? What is it about this work that is inspiring? Is it the sound of it? Is it the things he talks about, writes about, what what is it? It's how he writes it and it makes it like rhyme and stuff. Mm, so sound is very important to you. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else want to talk about their poetry heroes? Yeah. Again, uh, Kinaya. Um, I really like Langston Hughes, and my dad writes poetry, so I'm a big fan of his work, too. Okay, great. Uh, did any of you catch Amanda Gorman uh, reading uh, in any of these public programs that she's done, um, not just at the uh, inauguration last year, but elsewhere? I love her work. She's so inspiring. Now, maybe... Uh, I think there's a little time and I wondered, would you mind doing uh, a little poetry prompt maybe? Doing a little writing uh, before we close the program for the afternoon and invite the audience also to maybe share 
uh, this poetry prompt along with us and you can do a little writing, free writing for like maybe the next eight minutes or so. And then maybe you can take it away from this program and continue that and continue working on it. Maybe it can become a new poem or a story or something. So I'm gonna share my screen right now. And I have a poem by Naomi Shiab Nye, uh, who I also uh, love very much. This is a poem called Shoulders, and I'll read it. It's very short. Let me just adjust my screen. Okay. Shoulders by Naomi Shiab Nye. A man crosses the street in rain, stepping gently, looking two times north and south because his son is asleep on his shoulder. No car must splash him. No car drive too near his shadow. This man carries the world's most sensitive cargo, but he's not marked. Nowhere does his jacket say fragile, handle with care. His ear fills up with breathing. He hears the hum of a boy's dream deep inside him. We're not going to be able to live in this world if we're not willing to do what he's doing with one another. The road will only be wide. The rain will never stop falling. I love this poem so much and it speaks, you know, every now and then I pick it up again. It just seems to speak to all of the different things that we experience in today's world and what we feel we need today, you know, off and with each other and for each other. So here's my quick poetry prompt. Uh, I want everyone who is willing to do this with us to think of a person or a place or a community or a thing that speaks to you of safety or comfort or refuge. So very quickly, without thinking too hard about it, write down three or four lines, including concrete images or things that to you represent this person, place, or thing, and that represents safety, comfort, or refuge. And you can just jot down anything, you know, lines, uh, that could be, you know, lines towards a poem. Just think of this as a very quick draft. What do you love about it? Who or what helps make it the way it is? What are some threats to it maybe? And how do you want it to be in the future? So let's just take maybe six or seven minutes uh, to write towards this quick prompt. And then if anyone would like to volunteer to share what they've written, we can go around the circle and you can just read. I mean, no, no pressure. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be in any fixed shape or form. If anything just comes to you uh, that is striking, that you feel speaks to these prompts, just jot them down. So I was thinking of that poem of Naomi Shiab Nye and that idea of safety, comfort, or refuge. So what place, person, or thing, or community gives you that same feeling and in what way? I wish I had thought of maybe some kind of music to play while you're doing this, but I've just thought about it now. So just, just write to your own music. Okay, let's give it two quick minutes and then, you know, it need not be finished in any way. Just want you to jot down uh, the strongest things that come into your mind, strongest images right now or words even. And then I just want to check back with anyone who would like to share, who would like to volunteer to just share what they came up with. And again, this is by no means a finished piece. I just I uh, wanted to see if there was anything that was striking to you from this prompt, if it took you anywhere, which you would like to explore further uh, in a poem later on, maybe. And I hope that this prompt was, um, was something that took you uh, to that place. 
Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now and just check back with anyone. Would anyone like to share what they came up with? Even from among our uh, attendees, if they want to share, please, you know, you can do that. You can drop it in the chat. Um, would anyone like to share what they came up with or what you thought about? Even images or words. Um, what kinds of things did you think about when in the prompt, the prompt said, think about something that uh, stands for safety or comfort or refuge? David, yes, go ahead. Yeah, so I wrote a poem here. Go ahead. It's about the prompt right here. So I'll start reading it. The title of it is In My Home. I'll start reading it. In my home, I feel safe. In my home, where I was born, where I was raised, where and where I feel safest. In my home, where I live, where I sleep, and where I am happy. Nice. Thank you. Uh, and that seemed to just kind of flow smoothly too. Thank you, David. Thank you for sharing. Uh, anybody yeah. else? Yeah, I agree. I, I'm also, um, I, I feel a uh, home or a nest, a place like that is very important to anybody uh, that is thinking of safety or refuge or comfort. Anybody else want to share what they thought of or what they wrote down? Like I said, it doesn't have to be finished. I just wanted, I was just curious of, about whether um, the prompt was able to take you somewhere and what that place looked like in your words. Any volunteers? Or even if maybe just talk about uh, the idea if you don't wanna share the actual words you wrote down. Yes, Abby. Um, for me, I wrote about, um, like, you know, that one person that you can kind of like always talk to. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is always um, there to listen. Yeah. Maybe an idea of like uh, dependability. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, anybody else write about anything else that uh, we haven't heard other uh, poets here talk about? So anyway, I hope that this prompt is something that you can use and use it, take it away with you and uh, use it to develop another work and um, maybe share it with others too if you feel so inclined. But uh, now I'd like to just thank you all for being here. Thank you for uh, sharing your voices, sharing your poems and telling us a little bit about your public poetry projects. Again, I remind you, please document what you're doing, uh, take pictures, you know, uh, if you have people write about it in your community, please share it with us. Uh, reach out to all the people in the email group. Uh, you have all the emails from uh, Young Poets and Community uh, announcements since November or December. So um, I hope you reach out to one another too, and I hope that you can also form uh, poetry friendships as part of this experience. And to everyone that joined us here today, thank you so much. Uh, watch out for the next program, which is part two of the same um, idea, the same theme of changing the world one poem at a time. Our next group is going to be our college undergraduate winners, and this is happening on the 19th of February at four o'clock, also through the Muse, and we will be sending out links closer to the date itself. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week ahead. And thank you, Susan, back to you. You too. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Take care, y'all.